Hey there. So if you've listened to any of my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of pre-reading and that's just scanning through lots of material, trying to get an idea of what you want your research topic to be on. And as you're doing that, the, the best way to do it is just to find as much material as you can and really sift through it rather than sitting down and trying to really deeply read something that's going to be uninteresting and not useful later on. So I, I like to save time. I'm a little bit of a lazy researcher that way. So I have another video that shows you how to use EndNote Click and PubMed and I'm re revisiting an old topic and my old topic is uh, massage and inflammation. So um, the EndNote Click was all these little purple buttons. Um, now I'm going to go through how to use the Mendeley um, plugin. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it's called but um, uh, Mendeley Importer, excuse me, Mendeley Web Importer. And so uh, if you have a Mendeley account you can or you can sign up for Mendeley account, you can download the Web Importer and I've got it connected here to Google Chrome. So up here in my right hand corner I've got Zotero, EndNote, you know, Mendeley and Porta. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit of a geek. Um, but once I've got that uh, plugin uh, installed then I can come into Google Scholar and so depending on what um, interface you're using you might be going through University Library, you might be looking through Science Direct, you might be looking through EBSCOhost, uh, um, JSTOR, whatever platform you're using. Uh, many of them have the Boolean terms built in. Google Scholar doesn't. So a quick primer on Boolean terms, um, a little cheat sheet here, and if you want to freeze this and take a screenshot that might help. Um, student res and, and novice researchers are often confused by this, but it's just deceptively simple. And what you want to look for is if you want to look for anything and everything, you're going to take your two terms, your search term A, your search term B, and say give me OR, and that's going to give you any article that has either term. So if I said massage or inflammation, I would get every single massage article and every Every single article that had the word inflammation which would be way too many to, to have anything to do with anything but I could just uh, if I did a um, if I was trying to document a search I probably would want to do that first the next step would be to say give me massage and inflammation so that's where there's overlap right there in the center it's going to be a much smaller subset another thing to think about is using the term not. We don't often use this in research but I can give you an example of when I would. If I wanted to look at A not B I could say massage but not involving inflammation which doesn't really have anything to do with my topic. But I could add in a third term here and so I could come up here to my and section and I could say massage and inflammation not animal research. So that would be a way that I would use not. And the reason I mention that here is when we come back over into Google Scholar we have um, an interesting conundrum. There, there's no builder here so I have to build everything myself. So I'm going to type in massage. Uh, let's see if I get my uh, cursor in the right spot here. Massage. And then I always type my Boulay in terms whenever I can in caps so I remember them. Uh, what I'm looking at here, inflammation. And that also reminds me if I'm going to add in parentheses where to put parentheses. So here's my search term and I have 54,000 results. So if I looked at massage and inflammation in PubMed, let's pop on over here for one sec, um, and just look back at those articles, I have 304 results. So why do I have 54,000? Um, this is um, anything and everything that Google indexes. So the universe of the library is ginormous in Google Scholar compared to PubMed. There are criteria for things that are cataloged in the National Library of Medicine, not um, necessarily um, in Google Scholar, and there's also duplication here. So I'm going to scroll down and say 54,000 is way too challenging to um, uh, for me to do anything with but the purpose of this video isn't really to find anything so much as it is to use Mendeley. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come up to my uh, little plugin over here. Um, uh, it's not really called a plugin. I think I forget what the name of it is. Isn't that awful? Um, but I'm going to pop on up here and it's going to show me how many of the references here uh, show up in Mendeley. Now I've also got my Mendeley desktop open over here. So got that done with a bunch of uh, references in there. It's never very tidy but neither is my sock drawer. Um, so uh, evidence-based approach for choosing post-exercise recovery. Ooh this looks interesting. Um, 12 references are detected from Mendeley. I'm going to choose this one. Massage alleviates delayed onset muscle soreness. That's a different one. I guess it's a popular topic. Uh, massage timing effects post exercise inflammation. Rabbit. Oh, oh uh, PDF not found. We're going to skip that. Uh, another PDF not found here. Uh, PDF found. Attenuates inflammatory signaling after muscle damage. 
Um, cardiac autonomic nervous system. Nope. Uh, delayed option. There we go. That's the one I wanted. Got a PDF. Lovely. And I'm not sure what that is. Looks like it might be an abstract, but I've got enough of these that it might stall when I'm trying to add these, but I'm going to go ahead and add this. And what's interesting is I can add these two collections and these collections are already in my Mendeley desktop. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and just add these into massage and touch. I might want to add some of them later on to exercise and physical activity. When I click on add, that's going to directly take them on over there and then they'll be showing up in my library. So it's a really, really lovely importer. I can look at recently added when things are showing up here and they're not because it's probably still thinking. But the next thing I want to do as I'm adding all of these is I want, and I'll need to make sure I sync my library, I want to come into my uh, notes that I'm taking. So this is just me making a list of different articles and, and references that may or may not be useful. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull in some of these citations. And so I've just got this one right here on the center of my screen. Let me X out of Mendeley for one sec. And I know that um, it's I, I can get the article or the PDF free from the publisher. Um, you know, can find that pretty easily. But if I'm going to cite it, then I can come on over here and these little quotation marks that look like little, uh, I don't know, little goggly, googly things here. If I click on that, Google Scholar gives me a couple of different ways to cite. And so it doesn't give me NLM. So I guess I'm just going to take APA and I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy and then come into my Word document and I'm going to control V and I'm going to paste and it's not very pretty, but we have it here. It's all good. And then um, X out of that. It's a little harder to get the abstract in, but if I click just on the title, this should take me to the publisher's website and that's going to give me the link that I need. And then I can also view the PDF from here. So right now I just want to link to the abstract. So I'm going to copy the URL, come back on over, put this here. And, and the reason I want to do that, and I'm going to save this, um, is because I cannot tell you how many times I found a really, really great abstract somewhere when I was searching different databases and I forgot to put the link and I can't find it later on. And so you just want to make sure you give yourself some kind of uh, a way to trace it. So when I come into my notes file, I mean, this is uh, what I've got so far to scan through this weekend. Um, I can format this to make it look a little bit better. I also can um, take uh, what I've got here and do a quick reformat of it and move it into a spreadsheet if I want to take notes. So I'm starting to get a track record of some articles that are potentially interesting and this has, you know, I, I might scan them and say, oh my gosh, this is the most boring thing I've ever read in my life and I don't want to use it. I'm not obligated to keep it. But one last thing here is making sure that you, um, uh, you don't ever do research from abstracts. So I have a choice here on my screen in terms of viewing my PDF. I don't know if the things I tried to download, actually, I think they, I'm pretty sure they went into Mendeley desktop. Maybe they're not showing up as recently added, but I want to make sure that I get my hands on the, the real articles. And if I don't have the, the actual articles themselves, then I can't really use them in my research. So you want to remember that. So let's just go ahead. Last thing here is to click on the uh, enhanced reader here. There we go. I found the article. I can download it. I can, I'm going to go ahead and click and add to Mendeley here. Maybe that's really going to add it this time. Um, I could print it if I was inclined to print it or save it as a PDF, but at least I know that I can get my hands on this one. It's fair game if I choose to use it. So that's a, one of the ways that you can use, um, Mendeley along with Google Scholar. It's probably the easiest way to get your hands on articles without having to pay for them. Um, and if you've lost your library login or you don't have access to a university library, it's just a good way to get um, a lot of resources for pre-reading. Remember that this is pre-reading, so if you have to do a systematic review, then you're after you've done all of your pre-reading and you've had a general idea of where you're going to look, then you're going to go back and do your actual search later on. You don't do your systematic search when you're working on your introduction. So remember that. Happy researching.